Hey guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Today I have Tag back on the channel. Tag was here actually a week or two ago sharing Minor Poison again, the updated version which you're looking at right now. But now he's found the new powerhouse Minor Poison deck inside the entire game. Tag, I assume this is your favorite deck in the game? Hi, uh, yeah, by far it's by far my favorite deck. It's... I've been getting 12 wins left and right with it. I use it in CCGS. I've been using it all around. It's yeah, it's definitely an incredibly strong deck, and we're gonna see that uh, today, kind of proving it proved to us through your replays. But before we get to all that stuff, let's talk about the old version again, and maybe just kind of open up the, by talking a little bit about what the differences are. Uh, obviously, we know the differences in terms of cards, but what's the difference in time, in terms of play style, in terms of the tempo, both offensively and defensively, comparing both of the new version and the old version of the decks? So the newer version is a lot more offensive. You have the Mega Knight, and you don't actually have a stagnant Inferno Tower. You have even the Inferno Dragon, which is a defensive card that then translates into offense. The, the older variant has Inferno Tower, and that's uh, it changes the play style considerably. You're able to actually defend a little bit easier against Hog Riders and deny all damage, and it's just way more defensive in general. But it also lacks the pressure that the the uh, newer variation has, say, like they're dropping Lava Loon. With the Bandit variation, the 3.1 older variation, you would only be able to drop like a Bandit opposite lane in pressure with that, or a Lone Knight, or something along the lines of that. But with this variation, the uh, the newer one, you want to be going with like a Mega Knight plus Bandit, and you want to be applying a lot more pressure in single Elixir, because then you just want to defend the Lava Hound with an Inferno Dragon. It's a, it's a little bit different of play style and. Also, because you're not being able as you're not able to be as offensive with the uh, older variation, you're going to have to throw down a lot more poisons for more damage on the tower. But since there's a lot more moving parts in the newer variation, you're probably going to want to get more units on the field that, than than uh, more poisons. So it's interesting. There's a little bit that. of differences. It, it, yeah. It's interesting to me that the the cheaper deck is the more defensive deck. You know, it, it's it's something to kind of get used to in terms of. I just kind of feel like oftentimes the more expensive deck has better defensive options. But in terms of like your tempo in the match, let's talk about the first two minutes of the match and talk again about the differences before we get into the kind of the nitty gritty on the new deck. Uh, talk about the differences in regular elixir time. What are you doing differently, and how are you starting out the match generally? So I'm just being like very cautious. Uh, I'm really only going to be, I'm not going to be cycling my knight because it's really the only reliable tank to, uh, well, actually you do have bandit in this variation, but mm -hmm. I still don't really like cycling my knight too much if I don't have bandit in cycle, like, because then they can drop expo opposite lane and kind of wreck you. I saw a furnace in this instance, so I, I didn't really have that many issues dropping both of them. But uh, the big thing is like, I'm not going to be playing too aggressive until I know what their, what their cards are. I don't really want to be dropping any of those. Uh, I don't want to be dropping my Electro Wizard and my Inferno Tower and then realize, hey, guess what? My opponent has a balloon and then I lose. So uh, it's you have a lot uh, you have a lot less air counters in this deck as well uh, compared to the newer variation where you have an Inferno Dragon, you have a uh, Electro Wizard, and you have just you also have bats. So you have three air units that anti-air units that do really well against Balloon, Lava Hound, which are pretty much auto wins. In, 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 the, in the old version of the Minor Poison deck, the faster version, as you just said, we're going to be using Poison more with Minor, especially when we get into the double elixir time. With this new deck, how do you find, what do you find usually is your main source of offense moving into double elixir time? Is it still Minor Poison, or does it get crazy with all these, all these other legendary cards and win conditions? So, the the great thing about the deck, Inferno Dragon, if you uh, have a if you have a miner with it, it's really really hard for your opponent to defend that cost efficiently if they don't have the right cards in cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, I played CCGS against Razor, and I had an Inferno Dragon, and he actually had to poison it at one point, and he lost a lot of his tower. So cards like Electro Wizard, Inferno Dragon, even Mega Knight, are really really good with miner, so you don't actually have to rely on the poison just to get through. And okay. you can another cool trick that you can do is you can drop the miner on top of the tower, like kind of in the back. And if they have a puck or if they have any units that are like going to go towards your Mega Knight, sometimes they'll go towards your miner, and then your Mega Knight will jump on top of their unit and the tower and get some amazing damage on them. 
cool. It's just a lot easier to be more offensive because you're not having that uh, that one deck or that one card slot of the Inferno Tower that's just doing nothing. Everything counter pushes with that deck with Miner. That's true. That's true. Do you mind if I am? I'm pretty bad at Miner Poison. And this new deck, I'm intimidated by it, to be honest with you, Tag. I, I like yeah. I just feel like there's just like so many cards that I'm not sure the best way to use each card inside the deck together. So can we start out doing something a little bit different, throwing you a curveball here? And can I hop into a, a grand challenge match and you can tell me maybe if what I'm doing wrong, maybe just pick out some things that I might uh, you know, do better before we hop into your replays? Yes. Yeah. yeah, for sure, man. I'm down too. Awesome. I'm sure it's going to be a complete, uh, <laughs> complete uh, crap show, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we'll see. So I'm in a match right now. I'm not sure if you can hop in. Yep, I, I got it. Sometimes it gets bugged. All right, cool. <clears throat> so my starting hand is Mega Knight, Bats, Miner, and Ewiz. Pretty crappy. I'm going to play Bite like Bats. Bats. Yeah. yeah, for sure. You want to either Miner it or you want to be poisoning it. Yep, so no poison. We're just going to Miner and have Zap ready, and mm -hmm. hopefully those Bats help out a little bit too. All right, yeah, so that's, that's really good. good. Yeah. That was a good... Uh, Probably Ewiz. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, I after seeing uh, the Mega Minion, I was definitely thinking it was going to be a golden deck, but this is definitely a little bit obscure. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to use uh, the Zap on the Mega Minion and Bats. Hopefully I won't have to cycle back to... Okay. All right, so yeah, this is kind of weird, but I actually get a lot of damage on that right there with that uh, Bandit. Mm-hmm. So you should so, probably just poison that. Okay, I was going to ask if I should minor it or just poison. Yeah. So I have minor, Mega Knight, Inferno Dragon, and Bandit in hand. What would you do here? I would go Bandit off of Selene. Okay. Ooh. All right, so what you want to do is you want to Mega Knight in the middle, but still going towards the go uh, still going towards the giant. Oh, my bad. All right, uh, I got gotcha. you. So... I would have had his Mega Knight jump on top of mine and then still go towards the giant to kill it after. It's all good though. So you're going to be able to counter push, drop a bandit right on top of his so it doesn't charge. Uh, no, uh, oh, sorry. no bandit in hand there. Yeah. Okay, so should I combo a miner with this Inferno Dragon, you think? Yeah, you have to make something happen. Yeah. And you got to go holding. bandit and right. Try to be mm -hmm. aggressive here. Definitely. Bandit's gonna get a lot of damage there. Yeah. That's a great split push. Awesome, that kind of saved me there. It was looking pretty bad. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so here I have Mega Knight and E-Wiz in hand. Uh, I would go Mega Knight and Miner. Mega Knight, or, yeah. So you wouldn't have poisoned. <laughs> <laughs> so what was wrong with the poison there? Would you have just ignored it? Uh, I would have went for a Mega Knight first and then went for a Miner, and then they would have probably okay. dealt with the Mega Knight, and you, your Miner would have killed the pump for free. Because after they pump up, it's six Elixir, so it's very hard for them to defend 10 worth of Elixir going offensive or offensive at them. All right. I'm just going to Miner over here, try to get some chip. Yeah, for sure. You need one hit, so then uh, it's in poison range, because yep. 240 is poison range. Meanwhile, the Inferno nice. Dragon doing some work back there. So 10 yeah. seconds left. I guess I'm just going to... You're going to have to poison the poison right hand lane. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Now, I don't want to take up the whole video on my crappy replays, but <laughs> maybe we can... Uh, you know, I got the win. I feel like it could have been a little bit better. Maybe we can mm -hmm. just replay them like double time, and you can tell me, like, pick out the mistakes I, I made again, if that's cool. Yeah, for sure. All right, awesome. All right. And then we'll watch the pro, guys. Don't worry. Don't worry. He's coming <laughs> up. All right. So I'm going to press watch. And I'm going to pause at the beginning. And I'm going to click uh, times two right now. And then on three, two, one. Three, three. two, one, go. All right. So, yeah. All right. Awesome. We picked on a, up on a few of those mistakes kind of as we were going. But maybe you could just point them out to me here, too. Yeah. So I like what you did. I liked how you minored on top of the pump because you didn't have poison. Uh, if you have poison, you could have actually minored behind the tower and then check try to juke him and actually get like a poison on top of the pump, the tower, and everything, because they're always okay. going to try to defend the pump originally. I like how you defended that. You had to drop the bats. Um, in this instance, I actually didn't know if you had minor. I thought you only had poison in cycle, so I, to I told you to go for poison. Okay. But minor in that would have actually been decent. Um, okay. That's so this is the big thing right here. Yeah. That right here, if you had dropped the Mega Knight in the middle or more towards the left, 
and gotten his Mega Knight to jump on top of yours, it would have been really, really good because then your Mega Knight would have still counter pushed and kill, uh, or would have went to the side of the giant, worked on it, and then that bandit would have never gotten through and gotten that damage on you. Oh, okay. so that's one so, of the things that I always do is mm -hmm. a lot of things. You got to be very uh, careful of your placements when you're running Pekka or Mega Knight. You want to be as most efficient as possible. When you drop it in the middle, you got to drag as many units as you possibly can because it's such a beefy tank. You got to just utilize the the, uh, the hit points on it. Okay, so when you say Everything to the else, left, yeah. you mean like drop it in that ice golem spot where you where, where when you want to uh, distract the opponent's Mega Knight, like on the uh, left hand side, so he's heading the left lane, or? Yeah, pretty much. That's okay. that's what I would have done in that instance. All right, awesome, man. Well, that especially wasn't too with bad. too. Yeah, no, it wasn't too bad. The only other thing that you did was you dropped the bandit like right next to your tower, so his bandit got a charge off. You typically yes. want to just drop it right on top. So those are the two things, coupled with my mistake, not really realizing that you had minor and cycle. <laughs> well, that it's point. pretty hard to it? keep track of it, to keep track of cards when you're not playing. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm go ahead and that. pause at the first uh, one against Fernando, and I really want to know how to beat three musketeers, especially the pesky uh, three musketeer minion horde deck. So let's go ahead and give us a play by play on that if it's cool. Times two or times one? Let's just do times one on this one. So three, two, one, play. All right, so you see my opening hand, and you see that he has pump. I have poison. I don't really have minor, so unfortunately for me, I have to do a negative two trade here. And it's also really good for him because he has minion horde, and he has three musketeers, two cards that I typically do want to poison. So in this instance, I also don't even have Mega Knight if he splits his three musketeers. And I have like I don't really have like a great cycling hand. I'm just going to be cycling a uh, Electro Wizard in the back, and cycling an Electro Wizard into a musketeer or two musketeers is really unfortunate it's just gonna die so at this yeah. point i did i did a negative two trade at the start and then i also cycled an electro wizard into two of the musketeers yep. so typically what you want to be doing to counter the three musketeers as they split them in the back you want to be dropping an inferno dragon or an electro wizard in the lane of the one and then save your uh you want to save the mega knight until the two musketeers cross the bridge drop it right on top of it so okay. in a perfect world i would have actually had even four more elixir right here my electro wizard would have went in the lane of the one but he played that really well, and he dropped the two Musketeers in the lane of my one Electro Wizard and DPSed it down, so it did nothing. Okay, and I noticed that you comboed the Mega Knight with the Bats. Obviously, that's like an easy, no-brainer decision, but do you do that pretty often just to give it a little bit of firepower on the counterattack? Uh, yeah, a lot of times you have to cycle through cards, and I felt like that was definitely a uh, very good very good option, especially since mm -hmm. a lot of three Musketeer decks... Uh, will typically run either bats or minion horde or minions, and I didn't really know what variation he was running yet. So if he had bats, my bats would have been coupled with a Mega Knight to tank for it. So he really wouldn't have had the option of dropping bats if he didn't have Zap. So I kind of just took that away from them. Calculated risk, and it, it paid off. Paid off, yeah. Uh, when we talk about cycling cards, because I I, I love Three Musketeer decks, and obviously this isn't just uh, unique to Three Musketeer decks, but I always find that when I play Three Musketeer Bandit, and Bandit's also in your deck, uh, Bandit for me, and kind of like the match that I just had in the Grand Challenge, Bandit is a card that I often just play solo at the bridge just to cycle. Is that something mm -hmm. that you do this? Well, you're doing it right now, so is that yeah. something that you do the same? <laughs> I do it a lot. It's uh, I feel like it's one of the most uh, cyclical cards, and it also like takes an option away from your opponent. Mm -hmm. If you're playing like Pekka and you're, if you have Pekka, Bandit, and uh, or or Mega Knight and Bandit, a lot of the answers for Bandit and Pekka are the same thing. Same with the Mega Knight. You can like just you can either get goblins out of them. You can get a uh, Ice Golem with they probably want to tank. And it's pretty cool to like know what their card order is, and you're not going to really get punished for cycling a three elixir card that is, in my opinion, overpowered at the moment. Yeah, I mean, this deck is really a beast because you have like every overpowered card in it. You know, <laughs> it's like a combination of everything that you don't want to run into as an opponent. Uh, so that's why I like it. Uh, yeah. So. Tell me, too, about the once you have a one tower lead on your opponent, uh, or maybe it's one tower to one tower, right? Do you attack the other tower, or are you focusing on the three uh, crown, or does it just depend? And if you are going to attack the other tower, you know, what's your go to? Do you mount like a big, strong push uh, from the back? Do you mount a counter attack, or do you just use like the bandit in the pocket? Usually I don't go for three. Um, if I do critical damage after taking the initial tower and it's worth it for me, then I will do that. Um, 
but most of the time I'm just going to be going for the, the second crown because it's easier for me. And sometimes I'll leave the initial crown at like a minimal amount of HP that I can just swipe up with them so that my miners will get more damage on the left hand lane because the uh, crown tower would not be attacking it. So that's one big thing to consider. Okay. It's the same principle as Graveyard. You don't really want the Crown Tower to attack your miners until the last possible second, if you can afford it. Okay. Uh, you know what? I want to figure out how to beat bait decks with this deck. So let's go ahead and hop into that one next, if that's okay with you. The DWP7. Sounds great, man. All so right. one thing that I definitely want to talk about. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I really dislike in a lot of packet decks is people are running Zap. But if you're running Mega Knight and you're running Electro Wizard, those are two things that can actually be used to nullify all damage from the Goblet Barrel, or almost all of it. If you practice the Electro Wizard timing, which is two tiles from the river, as the, yeah, so two tiles after the Goblin Barrel crosses the river, you drop the Electro Wizard, and then it will nullify all of the damage from the Goblin Barrel. Three, two, one, play. All right, here we uh, go. Sorry, guys. Had to edit. I hate editing, but we missynced that play. <laughs> so here we are inside the match. Tag, tell us about your general philosophy with this deck playing against bait decks. So my general philosophy is you're not actually going to have log in this deck. So that means that you actually have to use your Electro Wizard or your Mega Knight to nullify all the Goblin Barrel hits. Oof. The way that you're going to be doing that is you're going to be placing it off to the side of your tower. And if you miss time it, then you're actually going to always hit at least two of the Goblins. Okay. So for the Mega Knight timing, it's always one tile before it crosses the river is when you want to do it. And then the Lesher Wizard tile is two tiles after the Goblin Barrel crosses the river. And what you do is you always look at the shadow of the Goblin Barrel, and you never really look at the actual barrel itself. Okay, this is really good information. Another, so the yeah. shadow of the Goblin Barrel and one tile before it hits the river is when you're dropping the Mega Knight and two tiles on the Ewis? Exactly. Okay. And... In terms of what we just saw you do it, and we, we'll, you'll probably do it again, obviously, but in terms of the exact appropriate placement, uh, talk a little bit about that. Is it right basically in the in the space right in between in the center of the, the side of the tower? The reason, yeah, exactly. I like doing it into the side of the tower because the, uh, the left side or the outer, so it, say we're looking at the right tower. The out the outer left side is always going to be the goblin that's hit first by your tower. So you always want to kill the two, uh, the one on the right and the one on the bottom, if you're actually going to miss. So I'd much rather miss the one that my tower is shooting already than missing the ones that my tower is not going to be hitting. And putting it off to the side is always, always a good thing because I do that with Goblin Gang, I do it with Electro Wizard, simply because if they go in for a pre-log or something, they're never really going to hit, uh, you're never, they're never really going to hit your Electro Wizard or your goblin, goblin gang for the, for that matter. So that's really good. When you went in with that miner right there, uh, along with the bats, is that something that you, you pretty much always do? Like when you have all the bats on the counter attack, will you send in the miner there if you don't need it for like a pump or something? I really like doing it against log bait because a lot of their answers are either princess, which can, the targeting can get messed up. It can either go on my miner, or it can go on my bats, or I could even kill the princess with my, with my miner. Or they're going to be dropping a goblin gang, which will die to the zap or poison, which is near their tower. Definitely valuable for me. Um, but it depends against the deck, in all honesty. If they're running for shirts, if they're running something with ice spirit and they have ice spirit and cycle, sometimes I wouldn't necessarily do it. That's actually, uh, you know, sorry for peppering you with a million questions, but how often would you say you send in a miner solo to target a princess? Like, let's pretend you don't even have bats going down the lane, but they drop a princess and you have no obvious play. Would you just drop a miner on the princess to, to kill her for a three for three trade or not with this deck? Early on, I like doing that. And I also like dropping the miner as the uh, princess gets closer to the bridge. I don't like dropping in it almost, unless I'm about to leak elixir, I don't like dropping it until uh, the princess gets closer to the bridge because they have less reaction time or they have less time to actually be able to react to it and defend their princess. So. Okay. That I don't sense. like doing it as the princess is exactly at the bridge because then a lot of people predict and drop stuff, but I like it doing it before it actually gets to the bridge. If if uh, I'm not leaking elixir at that point. Okay. Uh, but it's never a bad play to finish off a princess with a miner. Okay. Yeah. Uh, what about the so on these remaining replays here? What do you think is the more difficult matchup: the golem, the giant mega knight, or the mirror match? Um. They're all di they're difficult if you don't know what you're doing in all of them, but maybe the giant 
not entirely sure. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. So against Gran Torino, I'll go ahead and pause at the beginning. Let me know when All you're right. with me. Yeah, I'm ready. All right, three, two, one, play. All right. So obviously you have no idea what you're going against yet. What do you think of this starting? What would be like a perfect starting hand for this deck? I really like having Miner, and I like having Poison as my fifth card, just okay. in case I know, like, in case they pump up. So then I have the ability to go in for a Miner in the back of the tower, and then also, like, juke them out and go in for a Poison. Notice the big thing that I'm doing right here. I'm dropping my Miner in the opposite lane of my Bandit. The reason being is after I, if they kill the Miner, then the units are going to go in the left-hand lane, and they're not going to go towards my Bandit. So my Bandit will still do a lot of damage. They have to allocate a lot of resources to defend both of those. Okay. That's one of the biggest things that you want to be doing when you're playing a minor bandit combination or any bridge bam or anything with minor. I really like dropping my minor in the opposite side of of the uh, the units that are going towards their tower. Okay. And we saw uh, you just kind of cycled a Inferno Dragon at the back. Is that is the reasoning on that just kind of to stop them from supporting the giant push and having to answer it? I like cycling Inferno Dragon with this deck uh, for the most part. I think it's just a good cycle card. Um, mm -hmm. At least in this deck, there's not... A lot of great cycle cards, and Inferno Dragon definitely demands a response. You have Zap, so if they do have bats, you can just kill them and make them respond with something actually like big. Yeah, that's true. And look at this, you're going to connect for a little bit there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Inferno Dragon, like, he almost seems like he costs more than four, you know? You almost mm -hmm. forget sometimes that he's only a four elixir card. Notice how I dropped the Miner to pull the uh, Inferno Dragon. I don't actually want to use my Electro Wizard because I wanted to use my Electro Wizard on defense to slow down the entire giant push right there. And I noticed that like I have a huge lead. If I just defend and I use minimal a lot of minimal amount of blitzer to defend as efficiently as possible, then I'm gonna be in a pretty good situation. E Wiz is really, really good to have in hand when you're trying to defend compared to a minor in specific situations. And I just uh, I like what I did right there. Me too. That was a really like a pro play there in terms of something that I certainly wouldn't have done. Oftentimes, I'll just use like what I feel the best card in my hand is without even thinking down the line too much. So yeah. that's kind of good advice, you know, uh, or a good lesson there, I guess. Another thing that you probably just saw right there is my miner was targeting the tower and my mar my miner was taking taking the shots from the tower as well. So what I decided to do right there is. He dropped an Electro Wizard right on top. You can actually log or zap that Electro Wizard, and then your Electro Wizard will stay alive. So okay. I, the interaction is you would have a Miner on the tower still, and your Electro Wizard be, would be shooting the tower, and you would pretty much be winning the game. I love doing that interaction. b taught me that, and it's been a pretty much a staple in all Miner Poison games for me. Awesome. Can you repeat it one more time? Because I was getting another phone call, and I think the viewers could hear it, but I couldn't. All right. So <laughs> Sorry, man. <laughs> say my miner was on the top of the tower, and I have an Electro Wizard going towards the tower. Yeah. They actually drop an Electro Wizard right on top of my Electro Wizard. You can either zap or log their Electro Wizard, and your Electro Wizard will stay alive, and it will continue to shoot the tower with your miner still supporting and taking the damage from the uh, tower. So. Okay. In that situation, if they only have four elixir and they drop an electro wizard and you kill it, and then you have an electro wizard and minor combination, that damage racks up and can instantly win you the game if they're on a low amount of elixir. So I did it right there. I made him spend another. Uh, I made him spend more elixir to defend that simple electro wizard. So that was really annoying for him for sure. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for repeating the tip for me. I'm, I apologize, guys, if you had to hear it twice, but it's a good tip. Uh, so, Tag, dude, thanks for coming on again, man. I always love having you on the channel. Is there uh, anything coming up on your channel that we should know about? You guys, by now, I hope you're all subscribed to Tag on YouTube, but you have, what, like three or four videos a week? Yeah, no doubt, man. It's yeah. uh, it's a grind. I usually do three minimal. Um, well, you stream, too, so like yeah. it's, it's a lot. Yeah, I try to upload every other day that I'm not streaming. So okay. I stream, and then I take Sundays off. I feel like so I, I'm doing six something six out of seven days of the week. So feels good, man. It's a lot. I know, right? Asserting dominance on the content creation scene. Do you? Uh, <laughs> so what's coming up? Anything that we should know about, or have you not planned yet? Uh, I already have. I already recorded two videos. One of them's a lot of ladder pushing actually i've been starting to do that a lot more frequently on my channel and a lot more live battles i'm also considering putting up another guide to log bait on my channel like my minor poison just going through every single specific like matchup with log bait and giving a lot of people tips and tricks that most people don't know mm -hmm. so yeah that's, that's awesome man 
we'll definitely be on the lookout for those. I really like how you, like you said, like how you kind of really delve into the little interactions. I think that's what kind of sets you apart from other YouTube channels. So definitely be looking forward to those, man. No doubt, man. All right. Well, thanks again for coming on, man. And uh, take it easy and good luck on the uh, trophy pushing this season, man. Thanks. I appreciate it, Ash. It was a blast. Thanks for having me on the channel. No problem. Can't wait to try this deck. So guys, that is going to do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this conversation with Tag. A lot of you guys requested to have him back on the channel after his previous Minor Poison uh, rendition, deck rendition, I guess. Uh, so I wanted to thank him for coming on. Make sure you show him some love on YouTube. I want to give a huge shout out to my YouTube partner, Bren Chong. Check out his information in the description below. And most importantly, thanks to all of you guys for continuing to watch and support the channel. It means the world to me, so thank you. And as always, Take care, guys.